Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 416. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to review the answers uh, given to the questions asked on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight we have Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. He's also a Google product expert on the AdSense uh, community. He's based in uh, Wimbledon, a uh, suburb of London in the UK. Mm, Tim Kappa is uh, CEO of onlineownership.com, um, a, a recent winner of, of an award uh, as the best local search agency for Middle Earth. Um, Tim is based uh, in Corby, about 100 miles uh, north of um, London. Okay. Let's have a look at our first question. Um, this is from Hanzilla Sadiq. It's titled, Are These Good Results? His question was, he said, my client gave me 10 keywords to rank his website for in five months the website was just built and it wasn't even indexed after five months i ranked three of these keywords on the first page two of them on the second page two of them on the third and one of them on the fourth and two of them on the sixth heavens are these good results Um, well, so it depends on the keywords were well, firstly, do they drive any traffic? Do they convert traffic? That's what typically would determine a good result. Okay. Well, um, I mean, if ahead, I mean, and Tim's answer is the correct one. Um, but the another answer to that question is: Have you feel fulfilled what the um, client asked, and you seem to have done so? And to that extent, it's good. Whether they turn into um, sales revenue, that's another matter. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Okay, let's um, wrap that one up and let's look at number two on our run list from Jenna Jade, uh, who asks, what is social search? Um, Jenna said, hi, everyone. It might be a dumb question, LOL. Um, but I've been asked to put together a social search strategy as part of an overall search strategy. So what is social search? Hmm. Perry Bernard, uh, well, who answers so many questions uh, on a daily basis uh, on the Dynamics since Facebook group. Go ahead. So, well, social, uh, you're going to have to define it. You're going to have to split it out because social is obviously their own unique platforms. Um, so you would have to look at for the, which platforms your client is on. Um, if they use Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, those are your three platforms um you will need to obviously break down on their own internal algorithms they will have their own documentation on and of course other people have written stuff um on getting better results in those particular social platforms um and then your fourth one i guess would be to break out do any of those three 
platforms because remember they're their own entity they're their own little uh, internal ecosystem do any of them get displayed within regular search now so for example um facebook tends to only display like his name or the, the home page unless they're extremely popular will um google even bother you know displaying any other thing like twitter so you know in, in regular search you have twitter cards appearing but those typically only appear for um sort of higher profile more visited more uh, um more you, you, you know that that would make sense to appear in search so the first job is one identify which one the client uses two for each of those then break out what the what the strategy is on those own ecosystems on um better engagement better like views whatever tweets shares whatever they may be instagram yeah view what those are uh to those and then i think the fourth one would be um to look at do any of those platforms get pulled search what does it look like and what would we need to achieve in those platforms to be pulled into regular search also so i think that's how you should approach that you really are a deep thinker tim <laughs> One thing I would add is that for image search, um, Pinterest is pretty um, good. Um, you can expect quite a lot of um, traffic from Pinterest, and some of which would be via search engines, via image search, um, because they seem to do reasonably well um, on image search and actually in organic search as well. Um, so if the particular topic and there's a board and that is quite popular and an image from your site is pinned on that board, that can drive quite a lot of traffic. And Pinterest is one platform that is um, clearly interested in appearing on search engines, whereas I think the likes of Facebook, Twitter, and um, perhaps less so with LinkedIn, they want to keep you within that platform. Um, obviously, you do see Facebook posts and Twitter posts appear in organic search, but it, I don't think they have that much interest or effort in trying to appear on search results, whereas Pinterest does. Brilliant, Massa. Brilliant. And thank you, Tim. Brilliant. Okay, let's mark number two as complete. And here we are looking at number three with uh, uh, David Corwood uh, saying, I'm really struggling with SEO on my website. Don't feel bad about that, David. We all feel that way. Um, and uh, David goes on to say, hi, all. He said, I'm really struggling with SEO on my website. I've been looking at Google Search Console and I'm ranking between 60 and 80 uh, for some queries that I have multiple pages optimised for. I have green faces for SEO and readability in Yoast. On the other hand, I'm ranking really well for queries that I do not mention on my website and have no interest in ranking for. I know there's no magic solution or quick fix, and I understand the importance of domain authority and backlinks, etc. However, even in a competitive niche, I would have thought that my basic optimization would have gained slightly better results. Is there something obvious that I'm missing? 
Uh, thanks uh, in advance. Okay, so David, first, the first things. Um, so Search Console will pull out things and show you, like, and it's a great tool because you're looking at different queries and you're going, oh, okay, this 80, like page eight, or this one page nine, and things like this. Um, but the first thing I would do is make sure you check you, you segmented by the actual country because the basic check that you're doing is like literally across all, okay? So the first thing I would do is say, make sure you, you, you're viewing it by your country because there's no point in including stuff like where you may be appearing a page 102 in India, um, page um, 340 in Thailand, and then page four in your own country and all these get merged together on an aggregate. So first thing I would do is segment it by your country, okay? So that's in the little top, it says, you know, and then you just dink by country, okay? So that's the first thing, to give you slightly more better uh, accurate uh, information. The other thing is like, what you must understand, Yoast has got like, the Yoast and the green lights has really got nothing to do with SEO. Um, if you chuck in the your keyword in the title, your keyword in there, in their little uh, whatever that keyword thing is they're called um, thingy if you chuck it on page once in h1 i think a couple of times in the body copy and then in your description you get a green light it's like literally got nothing to do with seo okay um so 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 what so like so that's yoast out of the way um but in terms of that, it's going to give you an idea. And like, without you saying how competitive these this particular term is, you know, um, is it just as like you know, there's so many variables here. So you've got that particular term. What's the competition for that? You know, page one for that. Like, what are the other ten doing? Um, who are they? Um, do you only have one page in your site for that particular search query? Um, if it's properly optimized and, you know, let's say you've got these green lights on yours, which I just said, it's got absolutely nothing to do, but let's just like say for the minute, you've optimized that page. Now you've optimized that page, but it's literally only appearing. And once you've tidied up Google search console, but let's say it's on page four. So. The, the, the basic rule of, you know, the, the basic thing here, without getting into all this kind of blumpf uh, domain authority and all this sort of shit, um, you know, if you if you basically have optimized that page, right, and it's on page four, okay, now your question in your mind, right, that you should be thinking is, how do I increase the authority or Google's understanding that my page satisfies that search query and, you know, users, if they land on that, it satisfies the search query and users will find, um, you know, content around that, etc. So you've got your page, you've optimized it, but now, as you say, it's not great, it's black like page four. And I'm assuming, assuming it all's perfect and it's optimized well. So then the next thing I'm going to look at now is, right, so Google, I've got this page, Google doesn't quite see it as a fit yet. So how do I increase that in Google's sort of like understanding of it? So I'm going to start now concentrating on topical content around that and to actually bolster that main page. So I'm going to look at that main query and now I'm going to break down everything relating to that query. And that could be, you could do it in a variety of forms because I have no idea what your site is. It could literally be in the form of blog content, news content, where you break down all sorts of questions, guides, um, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff around that, you know, around that. So one, you're creating longer tail content that's not competing against that short, short tail query. You're competing against the longer stuff, 
which people typically search for when they're researching that final product anyway. So you're capturing it in, in the purchasing phase, but you're answering these questions. At the same time, you're providing Google with the understanding that this guy really knows his stuff or this stuff will satisfy that user's query because look, he's got, he answers this on that. He's got a guide on that. He's got four videos on how to do that. He's got um, this, he's got, I don't know, some technical specs on it. Uh, all satisfying different avenues within to that main search query. And all of these little resources you create interlink through to the main page, right? Now you're showing to Google that, hey, this actually would satisfy a user's uh, search query. And if it doesn't, there are a wealth of resources within that site around that entire query that will help the user even further. So that's where I suggest you start looking now. Thank you, Tim. Um, Mr. Taki, did you want to add anything to, to Tim's excellent answer? Okay, look, a couple of things I want to point out. I love uh, Josh Levinson's quote uh, in the comments of this. Um, and he said, pay attention to your audience, not tools. Um, and I, I, I can see Tim nodding in agreement. Um, and Michael Martinez, uh, understand the importance of the main authority, et cetera, et cetera, uh, all those um, metrics. Um, he said, not important for search engine optimization. Um, he said, and I'm dying to scroll up and see what he said. Uh, he said, as a general rule for SEO, if whatever you're doing isn't working, try something else. Well, that sounds logical, Tim. Okay, uh, let's move on to number four on our run list. Katia Martin uh, asked the question, it's titled, would it be beneficial to change the URL? Um, we were talking about this earlier on when we joined uh, um, before we started recording. Um, in you, general terms, um, it's never beneficial to change the URL for whatever reason. Anyway, um, Katia has said, hi, everyone. So in the past five months, I have migrated my entire Wix site uh, to WordPress. However, my Wix site had the structure URL of sitename.com slash post slash postname. And when I migrated everything, I made sure to keep the same structure um, so as not to create broken links. Um, would it um, be um, uh, beneficial? Um, uh, what have I done here? Um, would it be beneficial uh, in any way to change it um, to sitename.com slash postname instead? Thanks for your help. Mm. Okay, so this is the way I would look at it, Katya. Look, it's not ideal the way that 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 does it unless you're structuring in 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 um wordpress uh is like that because you know your new ones are gonna do you see what i mean so i would i mean the thing is with the redirect you can do it with a catch-all you know redirect uh quite quite like with 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 a specific thing for the post as such um but uh, Look, ideally, I, I would I would not have the post in it. You know, if it's a category, then it would be, you know, if it's a direct URL, direct direct URL. I, I, I ideally I would tidy that up, especially if you're going to build onto the site. You know, having these URLs with post in it. I'm assuming for Wix, post means news or blog or something. Um, and then, like, yeah, so. You know, I don't think you, you know, and also the other question is, I mean, 
to me, if if this was like we're talking a super amount of traffic here, um, and it's super amount of traffic that's converting all the time, all day long. Let's say this was a newspaper. Um, that would be you would really not want to be changing that structure um but then again you can chuck in you know you can put redirect rules in i'm kind of guessing that maybe your site isn't at that kind of level and just redirecting to the the url structure that you want you cut you're comfortable with and that is going to sustain you over the years you know that kind of structure I would rather get that done now than this causing a pain in the ass, you know, in five years time when you double, tripled your content, um, when you've added new sections to it, you know what I mean? I would, I would rather get that pain out of the way now. Um, and, and, and just, and just change it now rather than worrying about this. Um, when I'm kind of guessing that, you're not sort of on that massive traffic level kind of thing now. So I would probably buy the bullet, just do it now, get those redirects in, and at least then you've got a proper structure for anything developing on the site now moving forward. Good one, Tim. Okay, let's look at number five on our run list. Nathan G'day um, has a question that's titled, Is a single niche uh, better for Google? Um, Nathan goes on to say, Hi, I have a domain that has a, a really good keyword like crib. Uh, so I could sell cribs, a slang for apartments, or sell baby cribs. What if I have both on the same website, like bikes, uh, like motorcycle and bicycles as well? Um, will that work as a dual niche website? Um, or a single niche for Google is better? Slightly wrong way. Because you, you, you're kind of saying, will Google understand what my domain name is and that it's selling something that may or may not be slang to that kind of thing and it may or may not include two or three different things. I mean, let's look at, for example, um, you know, something that's got, uh, got nothing to do with it, ASOS. Like, we know ASOS sells clothes. It's not just you know men's it's men's women's kids it's it's a whole kind of thing but we know asos sells clothes um the other flip side of it is yeah fine like at the minute if you want to christen but you're kind of failing to take into the fact that at what point does the user and which users become more so which part of it becomes more successful and which part of it then becomes um redundant like then you've got to redesign an entire site because one part people are saying oh great okay so apartments oh and i remember the you the thing cribs but then they turn up and there's like they land on the wrong page and there's a freaking baby crib and then it's like oh jesus it wasn't that one so like I think you're just sort of like totally looking at it the wrong way in a sense that, or like, are you looking at the fact that, hey, if I get this, I can literally sell all sorts of shit on it. But the point is, would someone go to an apartment to see cribs, to see a fucking motorcycle? Like it seriously does not make any sense. Yeah. So if you're planning on building this as a business, that's a crap idea. Just stick to one, build it, work on it, and 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 stick to that project. Like, and then if you're gonna do baby cribs, do something else for baby cribs. But like a baby crib in an apartment and a motorcycle. Really? 
or is this just a build and throw away and flip it kind of thing for a couple of extra bucks? Fine, if you're going to do it like that, do it like that, flip it and just whatever. But you know what I mean? I'm like, that just makes no sense to me. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it's sort of putting the cart before the horse thing, isn't it? In that, as I understand the question, he has a domain name, which contains a common noun. So crib, which can mean two things. Um, so it doesn't have a business yet. He just has a domain. And then he's asking whether he should concentrate on one meaning of that word or both. And as Tim said, I don't think that's really where you want to start. And I don't think the domain name itself containing a common noun is really going to help. What you need is the ability to brand your business, not a domain that contains a common noun. Excellent, Mr. Tuggy. Okay, let's move on to number six on our run list from Chris Mason. It's titled Best SEO Practice uh, for a Franchise Business. Um, he said, hi, I designed a website for a new therapy business. Um, the owner has since decided to franchise the business idea to other areas of the country, selling the right to use the name and, and brand, uh, etc." He wants these other businesses to run independently and has asked for a separate website to be created for each. And while some of the info will be specific to the new business and location, much of the content will be identical. Is this good SEO practice or is there a more uh, appropriate way to roll this out as new franchises open in towns and cities across the country? Uh, many thanks. This is a new situation for myself, and any advice is greatly appreciated. Okay, so if you were going to do separate websites, right? If you're going to do separate websites, um, that isn't an issue, but it can't be the same because. <clears throat> when essentially you've got, let's say, four in an area over time and someone searches for a specific therapy and you've got four sites with the exact same therapy content, you're going to run into problems because Google's not going to display all four there. And then you're going to have franchisees screaming the fuck out of why is their site not listing okay it's simple if you have never dealt with franchisees they pretty much are paying a, a lot of money right you are then depending on what the model is are going to be charging them for that website plus the marketing and then each one of their pages is going to be exactly the same and none of their pages are going to be ranking for that query in that town you are going to be like i'll tell you what it, it, it you won't be hanging around like you will be causing so much headaches for yourself it's unreal and the potential of being sued right just mention that to your owner like if he's thinking about this franchise model he really needs to see what kind of packages he's selling to them you know because if you're selling the package of, of the website included in that that and the marketing and blah 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 you're gonna you, you know what i mean okay so you, you you best make sure it's not a dense set because you're going to run into big problems. So the next option. Uh, so the next one is if you do create separate ones, it needs to be the, you know their own unique stuff so that if someone does search for this particular type of therapy in this one, it's going to list all four of them 
um, you know, in, in, in the search results. Great stuff, but of course, you're still going to then have each form moan in. Um, <laughs> which unfortunately is just the way it's going to be. So potentially the other way of doing this is creating or switching or, 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 or doing a bit of a rejig uh, like, like a lot of franchises out there. So your main homepage, like your main site is the therapy brand homepage products right the products the treatments then you have your locations and that is what is your each location so you will have um you'll split it out you know where they can a nice search where People can either search by country, uh, well, not country because it's going more, but by state, city, town, whatever. Maybe even have a, uh, you know, just, you know, you can get quite creative with the with with the search page there. But essentially, each one is going to have their own unique um, location page, um, and it would so it would be X Y Z name hyphen location because they're all going to be the same name, correct? And it, they only differentiate to its location. So those are the ones that will be appearing in search results, the so location pages. Uh, they will be slightly different because it'll be an introduction. Uh, it will be, obviously, they'll be different because each owner will be different. Hi, introducing Jenny. She's been a, a therapy practitioner for 47 years. She's got a degree in X, Y, Z, Y. She's, um, the new thing is at what address, where the location is, that Google My Business listing is then, of course, uh, embedded into that page. Um, to book now, uh, contacts, all the contact details, um, uh, local parking for the area, um, you can find Jenny on, check out their Instagram or what if they've got a, I'm assuming you're going to allow them to have a Facebook page. This is their Facebook. This is, you know, their map location for Google My Business. Um, do they have any special offers running? You'd need to figure that out. How are they going to communicate their special offers running to you? Um, things like that. So they're going to have a super duper, their own location page, right? In my mind, one that's so much easier because your entire brand is building up equity on all sorts of products, um, treatments, therapies as a whole, um, rather than trying to build this up across, you know, could be, let's say, start with 10, then 20, then 30, then 40. And how do you like then roll out something that's different for each time, like a new product? Or are you just going to yeah, you see what I mean? It's like if you have 40 sites, you're going to have a massive, like massive, massive problem trying to differentiate these. Because ultimately, if you just duplicated stuff across the board um, 40, 50, 100 times, Google's only going to show the home page for the site, uh, the main site. They're not even going to bother with those little things. Okay. So my advice, if you structure it now properly, your, the current site, that then becomes your whole home thing. You have a really nice, you can, you can do a variety of different ways for searching locations, but the actual location page, and that is what um, they, you know, they get. Now, if you're doing GMB, um, you know, this, it's, and there's a lot of things to consider here also. Um, I would set up, quickly that I've learned from franchises and GMB, you know, you need to be equally clear that, um, and depends on your franchise model, but we will set this up for you and control it into a brand account. And we will provide you with ownership access and we'll retain manager access. Because what you must understand is you actually guys aren't the owners, right? You are only, you know, it depends on your level of franchise. They are the business owner, not you, but you can manage it. But in order to sort of manage these things um, and, 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 you know, try and keep a consistent franchise is have some branding advice for all of them. 
like um, if you're going to do images on GMB or Facebook or things like this, this is what they should look like. Um, provide them with branded image logo stuff that they can add on. You know, you know, you really need to you really need to handhold them so that your brand and franchise as a whole stays consistent against all the different little profiles that are going to be created ultimately and things like this. But my thing would be to create one site like and really good location pages. Um, and that way you're also going to have branded uh, search result local packs. So if somebody searches XYZ therapy in Texas, you're going to have then, you know, a, a dedicated brand local pack saying, well, here's the five in Texas, one, two, three, four, five, pick the one that's closest to you kind of thing. So you're going to benefit from that also, rather than having all these offshoot separate sites, which Google may or may not understand is part of a brand, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the way I would personally do it. Yeah, that's fantastic, Tim. Thank you. Right, let's um, roll down to number seven on our run list from Darius X AI or L. Um, it's, it's titled Building Backlinks from Other Countries. Um, and Darius asked, uh, does building backlinks slash guest posts slash citations from websites in the USA or India help a website that is in Singapore in terms of search engine optimization ranking? I still hear mixed reviews on this after a long period of researching. It seems like it works, but having local backlinks are stronger um, for uh, local authority. I uh, see Michael Martin is, uh, uh, said uh, earning links from any site anywhere in the world can potentially help a site with rankings. Building links is a risky alternative to earning them, um, while the same algorithms that reward sites for earning links also process the links you build, there are other algorithms to vet the links both earned and built. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, nat sites will naturally attract links from all over the all over the world. Uh, depends what genre you're in. Um, but I'm going to say to you, search. Google Webmaster link schemes, okay? Understand what you're doing rather than thinking about building them. Like, oh, you know, you're asking, I would understand the consequences of what you're doing, right? Um, and, then, and, then, and then make a uh, business decision based on that. Yeah, fair enough, Tim. Tim Michael Martin has said very much that um, uh, it's similar. He said that earning links um, from any site anywhere in the world can potentially help a site with rankings. That's what we've said before. Um, he said this isn't a good long-term strategy because it becomes a treadmill. You constantly uh, build uh, uh, more links to replace the links that either didn't work or only worked for a while. It's more productive to create useful content, especially if it's relatively unique. Okay, and uh, Darius. Yeah, totally. Uh, but the problem, the problem that these people have got themselves into is they've sold themselves as link builders. You know, um, and uh, and then the client ultimately believes that I have to have links 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 where nobody's actually explained to them that actually if you just work out you know you, you create a site you 
cover that content from all different sorts of angles to provide, you know, and literally become the uh, the answer to all questions surrounding that product, service, or whatever. Um, you don't need to build a, uh, build any links to rank. And I'm like, you know. Yeah. Okay, let's go to number eight on our run list. It's from CH Dua Fatima. How many backlinks should be enough? Goodness me, it's a night for backlinks. Um, how many backlinks should be built up in one month or one week? Please explain it fully. I'll, I'll save you the trouble unless you want to go. You, 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 yeah, you, yeah. So, so this is this is going to be your answer. Google, right? Webmaster. Google Webmaster Link Schemes. That's your answer. Yeah, it's, it's right. Um, <clears throat> that is so right. And Perry Bernard, uh, I see, uh, said you shouldn't build any, you should earn them. And great quotes tonight. I might make a book, yeah, Tim. All right. That, yeah, totally. Yeah. You should make a book, man. You should go through. You've got five years of seo quotes right um you should just scroll through get all them quotes and look if micah can publish a, a a book um from from like facebook quotes mate you've you've like you you would be like the, the total seo quotology book ultimate um, seo quotology my, 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 micah is an exceptional human being i totally Totally. Oh, well, there we go. That's Micah's next project, the, t the total SEO quotology book. He may have to, like, explete and delete and, like, redact quite a lot of my quotes, but, you know, hey-ho. Okay. Right, let's go to – I'm not sure. Yeah, we've still got one left. Um David Murphy asks, how important is the 600 word description on products? We sell earrings and find it very difficult to even reach 100. Yes, they've got a lot to answer for. Sorry, Tim, I cut you out. I don't know why you've, David, you've got this uh, idea of 600 words. Um, um, I don't know where that came from. I don't know what you've read. Okay. So, um, so firstly, look, you're going to firstly look at it this way, you know, so describe that in itself, like what it is. Um, platinum hooped earring with five diamonds or whatever. Okay um your your you know so if you're and without looking with that if you're um if you're what do you call it um product description so depending like i mean i don't know if your tab has a product description where you would say uh silver 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 plated um zircone, you know where you split out what they're actually you know made of if it doesn't have that, then I would uh, certainly just put a little, in, actually in text with little bullet points. This is silver plated, whatever carrot um, contains five zirconiums, whatever. So you, you're breaking it down. Um, and probably just look at, you know, if you're selling it or pitching it as an, like, I don't know, engagement then um you know just pitch it as engagement you know the, make the, the perfect engagement ring you know blah 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 um yeah you know you are going to probably only get to kind of that 100 mark 150. um it's the 600 words not necessarily you know massive um what you could do on some of your stuff where if you were looking at more i don't know you see i don't know how you've branded it out but if you're doing 
engagement, you could it could be worth um, just looking at a copywriter in terms of creating a story. If you're creating a range across a story, so you created the earrings to go with the the ring. Uh, this isn't necessary, but what I'm saying is this is something that you can slightly differentiate yourself from if you if you kind of doing those thematic sort of jewelry. Uh, you could you could approach someone and help you in terms of creating a story across a line, a brand, if you see what I mean. Um, no, you don't have to like get these six hundred words in. Um, a lot of products are going to be almost the same. Uh, the real differentiator will probably be just the way you've titled it because there may be one maybe silver plates and one maybe silver whatever one maybe gold um <clears throat> and the others the, the other differentiator will be you know the, the product or the size or whatever you however you differentiate them and the product code do your best you can with it uh, an idea is to potentially try and um look at if you're into sort of a into a thematic design where you can create look at a storyteller who can pull different elements into a story so these would look great with this thing and blah 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 and the ideal brides whatever so that that that's an idea for you if you want to go down that road at some point but from your initial question i don't know why 600 words um a lot of the econ clients i work with huh, I'm, i don't even know if we've got 100 words on that um but we do make sure that we um, we also interlink to similar related products. So you may also like, and then there's, if it's earrings, it's two other sets of very, very similar earrings. One other slightly higher price range, one slightly lower price range so that you're, you're providing that option to them. So if they don't land on something straight away, they look at like, oh, too expensive, but look at that one, that's better. Or they look at that one and go, mm, yeah, actually, uh, I like the more expensive ones. And then something sort of more thematic. So depending on what your site is set up, whether you're offering an upsell, a, a downsell, or something across sell to, to, a, to a ring also that would match the, the earrings, um, definitely make sure those are spot on um <clears throat> that you're you're cross-selling uh yet you're interlinking to so yeah i hope that yeah don't don't sweat it just do the best you can with them that's it then yeah. sweat it yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a similar sort of impression as tim you know you know i'm wondering where the 600 word description came from and i suppose it's a tool of some sort you know saying yeah that, you have to yeah. know this in order to get you know a smiley face or you know, or he read something about ecom or and, uh, and yeah. someone said 600 words and now people out there are freaking out how to create 600 word descriptions on a toothpick yeah. Ugh. um and it goes back to this thing, uh, question earlier as well in that you know people are sort of um relying on tools too much when when you should be looking into your own data that's what you have you have concrete data what did you manage to sell how did people arrive on your site what were they looking for how much of those searches have you converted you know you have a lot of data in your hands so instead of Sort of using a tool to give you a score about your site. Look into the data you have and see what's performing well. See what you might do better. And, you know, where have you failed to make the sale? What were they looking for and you couldn't provide? You know, these are the questions that you should be asking yourself rather than relying on a score from a tool. And in many cases, if you have a business, if you have been running a business for a prolonged period of time, then you have a lot of data that no one else has, but you have. Dig into those. Thank you, Mr. Taki. 
Okay. Now, uh, I think when I click this button, yes, it is. It's thank you for watching time. Um, we've answered all of the questions or reviewed all of the questions asked and answered uh, in the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, before we go, um, I, I'd just like to thank uh, Masataki Wasa and Tim Kappa um, for your um, dedicated uh, attention to Dumb SEO Questions. Week after week, you turn up and um, we, we do the job. Um, I'd like to also thank people like uh, um, Perry, um, Perry Bernard. Yeah. Uh, I almost said Perry Mason, uh, Tim. <laughs> Perry Bernard and um, Brendan Malone, uh, Michael Martinez, Michael Stricker. Um, you know, the people that uh, give answers uh, freely given uh, um, through the week. Yeah, and um, uh, make it so good um, to to um, look at um, again. Anyway, we'll be going now. We'll be back the same time next week. Uh, but for now, it's good night.